Is there a difference between plant-based diet and vegan diet? I have no idea, but our next guest does, and she is using her expertise to empower women to understand their bodies. Please welcome to the show the founder of Grow With The Flow, Thea. Thea, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Thanks so much for having me. Now, I have so many questions for you. First of all, I didn't know there's a difference between a vegan diet and a plant-based diet. So does this mean that if my cow is grass-fed, chicken is corn-fed, lambs, let's face it, only eat grass and vegetation, am I plant-based? Definitely not. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll break it down to you into a very easy way to understand it. So if you think of vegan, this is more of an ethical background, right? So it's animal protection. It's, think about all everything to do with animal welfare. We're plant-based is more of a dietary, nutritional point of view, mm. where it's, they, it, actually, if you think about plant-based, it's anywhere between 90 to 95% plants, where that 5% comes in with honey, a Christmas celebration where you're having turkey. So that 5% comes in, in very kind of random amounts, but 90% is plants. So you're a vegan, but you're just not 100% committed to it. You're allowed a hall pass when it's Christmas. Yeah, and for instance, like plant-based people will maybe still get leather mm -hmm. or their cars might still have some that has an animal underlie it, where vegans would not ever touch anything made with animals, honey that comes from bees. So they're very, very ethical, responsible when it comes to that. I'm actually interested, Faye, uh, in how you started. Were you raised uh, on a vegan diet or is it something you adopted later on? Definitely not. I'm from South Africa, so it's ah, a meat and potato. Great country. barbecue. Yeah, oh. braai. Braai, not barbecue. Oh, sorry, braai. <laughs> um, and no, I wasn't raised, my family isn't vegan or plant-based. Um, but yeah, I got really, really sick. And I was kind of thrown around from doctor to doctor and just a lot of medication. And I used to be in finance before this. And I literally quit my job and I went back home and I went to go study nutritional science to understand if people can bounce back from cancer, I can bounce back to what was happening with me. And that's how my plant-based journey started. And so what did, what did it turn out the problem was? How did the plant-based journey help you? So I was pre-diabetic. I had cardiovascular issues. Um, I had PCOS and endometriosis. And um, yeah, I just had major fertility issues. My hair was falling out. And I'm quite a short person, so putting 15 kgs on this frame, it just wasn't fun. I'm really interested to know how you feel about processed foods within the vegan industry, because a lot of people think because it's vegan and it says vegan on the packaging, it's super healthy for you. And I was saying to the guys earlier, when I, f I follow a very strict diet, it's not vegan. It's uh, occasionally I'll do plant-based, but whole plant-based. You know, I prefer to see what I'm eating. So how do you feel about like these almost gimmicky products that are claiming to be healthy because they're vegan, but actually are heavily processed? So that's a really good question. And I think this is where vegan and the media gets, goes really wrong because Oreos are vegan. Mm -hmm. um, you can get the most ultra processed stuff which are vegan. Just because it's vegan doesn't make it healthy. Mm -hmm. That's why whole food plant-based is the way to go. And I'm not saying processed foods are terrible. You can get really good quality sourdough bread. You can get really good quality pasta. That's technically processed. But when you mix it with tons of vegetables and beautiful other nutrients, I think it's fine. But that's where you get unhealthy vegans mm -hmm. who, just, who mostly do it for ethical reasons, but then are eating junk food vegan stuff. Yeah. Oreos are vegan. I know. I that you, heard, you heard that. She, she yeah. just said yeah. that. Oh, yeah. 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 Are you okay? Shows how much you've been yeah. listening. Yeah. As well. I like yeah. But it's true though. When my friend first became vegan, and this is a few years ago when there weren't all these amazing vegan options that there are, she literally lived off French fries and bread. That's not healthy. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah, they, uh, when you do describe it, I'm, I'm playing a little bit of devil's advocate over here. It very much sounds like a rich man's diet. Not at all. I will tell you something. When I moved to Dubai. It was, I was an auditor at that time at Deloitte and I didn't have a big salary. So you're talking to someone who's starting off in a very low end salary. And think about this, a can of chickpeas is what, five dirham? Organic chickpea, chickpeas are eight dirham. If you're going to buy steak, chicken, fish, salmon, prawns, that's nearly triple the price of that. So I don't, so I think there's such a misconception that it's actually expensive to be vegan when it's kind of the totally opposite. Is there a benefit to adding 
more vegan foods, more plant-based foods to your diet, even though you're not completely cutting out the meat. 100%. Look, I, if you look at my client base, um, even the patients at the clinic, I would say 40% of them are full-on plant-based, 100% plant-based. But then there are the other side of people who we can, we can still put in animal-based animal stuff, which I think is totally fine. Do I think you have to completely remove animal play stuff? No, but I think right now, the ratio of it needs to be flipped. Like let's go 60% plant space, 40% animal products. Mm. I don't think you have to cut it off if you don't want to. Hey, we are all carnivores here at uh, the paddle. So do you think if you had to make a compelling argument, knowing where our food comes from can change how we view our food and help us make more sensible choices? So. I always come back to human nature, right? So they did a massive study. There were 600 people. They took 300 people and said, okay, if you wanted to eat meat, we need you to go and do the slaughtering. How many of those 300 people do you think actually went and did what they did? Because everyone wants to kind of be naive to the fact, right? Of where, where is it actually coming <laughs> to? I could be I'm gonna, gonna say, say I, I would do it. <laughs> And we're going I grew to demonstrate up on a farm, it later so on. I'm very but, but used to yeah, seeing that kind of thing. How many people are going to the paddy field and pulling out the crops? I mean, you know, yeah. <laughs> the argument yeah, but, but could be had both ways. Yeah, it's not a slaughtering yeah. house, right? You yeah. don't physically see that animal die. Mm. Well, say, I know we've got a lot more to talk about, and you're going to stay with us throughout the episode. But coming up next, we're going to discuss if veganism is the right fit for everybody type with the gentleman at the corner store. So don't go anywhere. <laughs>